a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Mary, Queen of Scots Mary, Queen of Scots, also known as Mary Stuart or Mary I of Scotland, reigned over Scotland from 14 December 1542 to 24 July 1567. Mary, the only surviving legitimate child of King James V, was six days old when her father died and she acceded to the throne. She spent most of her childhood in France while Scotland was ruled by regents, and in 1558, she married the Dauphin of France, Francis. He ascended the French throne as King Francis II in 1559, and Mary briefly became Queen Consort of France, until his death in December 1560. Widowed, Mary returned to Scotland, arriving in Leith on 19 August 1561. Four years later, she married her first cousin, Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley and in June 1566 they had a son, James. In February 1567, Darnley's residence was destroyed by an explosion, and he was found murdered in the garden. James Hackburn, 4th Earl of Bothwell, was generally believed to have orchestrated Darnley's death, but he was acquitted of the charge in April 1567, and the following month he married Mary. Following an uprising against the couple, Mary was imprisoned in Loch Leven Castle. On 24 July 1567 she was forced to abdicate in favour of her one-year-old son. After an unsuccessful attempt to regain the throne, she fled southwards seeking the protection of her first cousin once removed, Queen Elizabeth I of England. Mary had once claimed Elizabeth's throne as her own and was considered the legitimate sovereign of England by many English Catholics, including participants in a rebellion known as the Rising of the North, perceiving her as a threat. Elizabeth had her confined in various castles and manor houses in the interior of England. After eighteen and a half years in custody, Mary was found guilty of plotting to assassinate Elizabeth in 1586. She was beheaded the following year at Fotheringhay Castle. Childhood and early reign. Mary was born on the 8th of December 1542 at Linlithgow Palace, Scotland, to King James V and his French second wife, Mary of Guise. She was said to have been born prematurely, and was the only legitimate child of James to survive him. She was the great niece of King Henry VIII of England, as her paternal grandmother, Margaret Tudor, was Henry Vi's sister. On the 14th of December. Six days after her birth, she became Queen of Scotland when her father died, perhaps from the effects of a nervous collapse following the Battle of Solway Moss, or from drinking contaminated water while on campaign. A popular legend, first recorded by John Knox, states that James, hearing on his deathbed that his wife had given birth to a daughter, ruefully exclaimed, It can we alas and it will gang we alas. His house of Stuart had gained the throne of Scotland by the marriage of Marjorie Bruce, daughter of Robert the Bruce, to Walter Stuart, sixth high steward of Scotland. The crown had come to his family through a woman, and would be lost from his family through a woman. This legendary statement came true much later, not through Mary, but through her descendant Queen Anne. Mary was baptised at the nearby church of St Michael shortly after she was born. Rumours spread that she was weak and frail, but an English diplomat, Ralph Sadler, saw the infant at Linlithgow Palace in March 1543, unwrapped by her nurse, and wrote, It is as goodly a child as I have seen of her age, and is like to live. As Mary was an infant when she inherited the throne, Scotland was ruled by regents until she became an adult. From the outset, there were two claims to the regency, one from Catholic Cardinal Beaton, and the other from the Protestant Earl of Arran, who was next in line to the throne. Beaton's claim was based on a version of the King's will that his opponents dismissed as a forgery. Arran, with the support of his friends and relations, became the regent until 1554 when Mary's mother managed to remove and succeed him. Treaty of Greenwich King 
Henry VIII of England took the opportunity of the regency to propose marriage between Mary and his own son and heir, Edward, hoping for a union of Scotland and England. On 1 July 1543, when Mary was six months old, the Treaty of Greenwich was signed, which promised that at the age of ten Mary would marry Edward and move to England, where Henry could oversee her upbringing. The treaty provided that the two countries would remain legally separate and that if the couple should fail to have children the temporary union would dissolve. However, Cardinal Beaton rose to power again and began to push a pro-Catholic pro-French agenda, which angered Henry, who wanted to break the Scottish alliance with France. Beaton wanted to move Mary away from the coast to the safety of Stirling Castle. Regent Arran resisted the move, but backed down when Beaton's armed supporters gathered at Linlithgow. The Earl of Lennox escorted Mary and her mother to Stirling on 27 July 1543 with 3,500 armed men. Mary was crowned in the castle chapel on 9 September 1543, with such solemnity as they do use in this country, which is not very costly, according to the report of Ralph Sadler and Henry Ray. Shortly before Mary's coronation, Scottish merchants headed for France were arrested by Henry, and their goods impounded. The arrests caused anger in Scotland, and Aaron joined Beaton and became a Catholic. The Treaty of Greenwich was rejected by the Parliament of Scotland in December. The rejection of the marriage treaty and the renewal of the old alliance between France and Scotland prompted Henry's rough wooing. A military campaign designed to impose the marriage of Mary to his son. English forces mounted a series of raids on Scottish and French territory. In May 1544, the English Earl of Hertford raided Edinburgh, and the Scots took Mary to Dunkeld for safety. In May 1546, Beaton was murdered by Protestant lairds, and on 10 September 1547, nine months after the death of Henry VIII, the Scots suffered a heavy defeat at the Battle of Pinky Kluke. Mary's guardians, fearful for her safety, sent her to Inchmahome Priory for no more than three weeks, and turned to the French for help. The French King Henry II proposed to unite France and Scotland by marrying the young queen to his three-year-old son, the Dauphin Francis, on the promise of French military help, and a French dukedom for himself. Aaron agreed to the marriage. In February 1548, Mary was moved, again for her safety, to Dumbarton Castle. The English left a trail of devastation behind once more and seized the strategic town of Haddington. In June, the much-awaited French help arrived at Leith to besiege and ultimately take Haddington. On 7 July 1548, a Scottish parliament held at a nunnery near the town agreed to a French marriage treaty. Life in France with her marriage agreement in place, five-year-old Mary was sent to France to spend the next 13 years at the French court. The French fleet sent by Henry II, commanded by Nicolas de Villegagnon, sailed with Mary from Dumbarton on 7 August 1548 and arrived a week or more later at Roscoff or saint paul de Leon in Brittany. Mary was accompanied by her own court including two illegitimate half-brothers and the four Marys, four girls her own age, all named Mary, who were the daughters of some of the noblest families in Scotland, Beaton, Seton, Fleming, and Livingston. Janet, Lady Fleming, who was Mary Fleming's mother, and James Versus' half-sister, was appointed governess. When Lady Fleming departed France in 1551, she was succeeded by a French governess, Francois de Perroy, vivacious, beautiful, and clever. Mary had a promising childhood. At the French court, she was a favorite with everyone, except Henry II's wife Catherine de' Medici. Mary learned to play lute and virginals, was competent in prose, poetry, horsemanship, falconry and needlework, and was taught French, Italian, Latin, Spanish, and Greek, in addition to speaking her native Scots. Her future sister-in-law, Elizabeth of Valois, became a close friend of whom Mary retained nostalgic memories in later life. Her maternal grandmother, Antoinette de Bourbon, was another strong influence on her childhood, and acted as one of her principal advisers. Portraits of Mary show that she had a small, oval-shaped head, a long, graceful neck, 
bright auburn hair, hazel brown eyes, under heavy lowered eyelids and finely arched brows, smooth pale skin, a high forehead, and regular, firm features. She was considered a pretty child and later, as a woman, strikingly attractive. At some point in her infancy or childhood, she caught smallpox, but it did not mark her features. Mary was eloquent and especially tall by 16th century standards, while Henry II's son and heir, Francis, stuttered and was abnormally short. Henry commented that, from the very first day they met, my son, and she got on as well together as if they had known each other for a long time. On 4 April 1558, Mary signed a secret agreement bequeathing Scotland and her claim to England to the French crown if she died without issue. days later, she married the Dauphin at Notre Dame de Paris, and he became King Consort of Scotland. Claim to the English throne In November 1558, Henry Vieille's elder daughter, Mary I of England, was succeeded by her only surviving sibling, Elizabeth I under the Third Succession Act, passed in 1543 by the Parliament of England. Elizabeth was recognized as her sister's heir and Henry Vieille's last will and testament had excluded the Stuarts from succeeding to the English throne. Yet, in the eyes of many Catholics, Elizabeth was illegitimate. And Mary Stuart, as the senior descendant of Henry Vieille's elder sister, was the rightful Queen of England. Henry II of France proclaimed his eldest son and daughter-in-law King and Queen of England. And in France the royal arms of England were quartered with those of Francis and Mary. Mary's claim to the English throne was a perennial sticking point between her and Elizabeth I. When Henry II died on 10 July 1559 from injuries sustained in a joust, 15-year-old Francis and 16-year-old Mary became King and Queen of France. Two of the Queen's uncles, the Duke of Guise and the Cardinal of Lorraine, were now dominant in French politics, enjoying an ascendancy called by some historians La Tyrannie Guisienne. In Scotland, the power of the Protestant lords of the congregation was rising at the expense of Mary's mother, who maintained effective control only through the use of French troops. The Protestant lords invited English troops into Scotland in an attempt to secure Protestantism, and a Huguenot rising in France, called the Tumult of Arms. In March 1560 made it impossible for the French to send further support. Instead, the Guise brothers sent ambassadors to negotiate a settlement. On the 11th of June 1560, their sister died. And so the question of future Franco-Scots relations was a pressing one. Under the terms of the Treaty of Edinburgh, signed by Mary's representatives on 6 July 1560, France and England undertook to withdraw troops from Scotland and France recognized Elizabeth's right to rule England. However, the 17-year-old Mary, still in France and grieving for her mother, refused to ratify the treaty. Return to Scotland King Francis II died on 5 December 1560, of a middle ear infection that led to an abscess in his brain. Mary was grief-stricken. Her mother-in-law, Catherine de' Medici, became regent for the late king's 10-year-old brother Charles IX, who inherited the French throne. Mary returned to Scotland nine months later, arriving in Leith on 19 August 1561. Having lived in France since the age of five, Mary had little direct experience of the dangerous and complex political situation in Scotland. As a devout Catholic, she was regarded with suspicion by many of her subjects, as well as by the Queen of England. Scotland was torn between Catholic and Protestant factions, and Mary's illegitimate half-brother, the Earl of Murray, was a leader of the Protestants. The Protestant reformer John Knox preached against Mary, condemning her for hearing mass, dancing, and dressing too elaborately. She summoned him to her presence to remonstrate with him unsuccessfully. and later charged him with treason, but he was acquitted and released. 
to the disappointment of the Catholic party. However, Mary tolerated the newly established Protestant ascendancy. and kept her half-brother Lord Moray as her chief advisor. Her privy council of 16 men, appointed on 6 September 1561, retained those who already held the offices of state, and was dominated by the Protestant leaders from the Reformation Crisis of 1559-1560, the Earls of Argyll, Glencairn, and Moray. Only four of the councillors were Catholic, the Earls of Athol, Errol, Montrose, and Huntley, who was Lord Chancellor. Modern historian Jenny Wormald found this remarkable, suggesting that Mary's failure to appoint a council sympathetic to Catholic and French interests was an indication of her focus on the goal of the English throne over the internal problems of Scotland. Even the one significant later addition to the council, Lord Ruthven in December 1563, was another Protestant whom Mary personally disliked. In this, she was acknowledging her lack of effective military power in the face of the Protestant lords, while also following a policy that strengthened her links with England. She joined with Lord Moray in the destruction of Scotland's leading Catholic magnate, Lord Huntley, in 1562 after he led a rebellion in the Highlands against her. Mary sent William Maitland of Levington as an ambassador to the English court to put the case for Mary as the heir presumptive to the English throne. Elizabeth refused to name a potential heir, fearing that to do so would invite conspiracy to displace her with the nominated successor. However, Elizabeth assured Maitland that she knew no one with a better claim than Mary. In late 1561 and early 1562, arrangements were made for the two queens to meet in England at York or Nottingham in August or September 1562, but Elizabeth sent Sir Henry Sidney to cancel in July. Because of the civil war in France, Mary turned her attention to finding a new husband from the royalty of Europe. However, when her uncle, the Cardinal of Lorraine, began negotiations with Archduke Charles of Austria without her consent, she angrily objected and the negotiations foundered. Her own attempt to negotiate a marriage to Don Carlos, the mentally unstable heir apparent of King Philip II of Spain, was rebuffed by Philip. Elizabeth attempted to neutralize Mary by suggesting that she marry English Protestant Robert Dudley, 1st Earl of Leicester. whom Elizabeth trusted and thought she could control. She sent an ambassador, Thomas Randolph, to tell Mary that if she would marry an English nobleman, Elizabeth would proceed to the inquisition of her right. And title to be our next cousin and heir. The proposal came to nothing, not least, because the intended bridegroom was unwilling. In contrast, a French poet at Mary's court, Pierre de Boscozel de Chastelaire, was apparently besotted by Mary. In early 1563, he was discovered during a security search hidden underneath her bed, apparently planning to surprise her when she was alone and declare his love for her. Mary was horrified, and banished him from Scotland. He ignored the edict, and two days later he forced his way into her chamber as she was about to disrobe. She reacted with fury and fear, and when Murray rushed into the room, in reaction to her cries for help, she shouted, thrust your dagger into the villain, which Murray refused to do, as Chastelaire was already under restraint. Chastelaire was tried for treason, and beheaded. Maitland claimed that Chaste Lazada was feigned, and that he was part of a Huguenot plot to discredit Mary by tarnishing her reputation.
marriage to Lord Darnley. Mary had briefly met her English-born first cousin Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, in February 1561 when she was in mourning for Francis. Darnley's parents, the Earl and Countess of Lennox. who were Scottish aristocrats as well as English landowners, had sent him to France ostensibly to extend their condolences while hoping for a potential match between their son and Mary. Both Mary and Darnley were grandchildren of Margaret Tudor, sister of Henry VIII of England, and patrilineal descendants of the High Stewards of Scotland. Darnley shared a more recent Stuart lineage with the Hamilton family as a descendant of Mary Stuart, Countess of Arran a daughter of James II of Scotland. They next met on Saturday 17 February 1565 at Weems Castle in Scotland, after which Mary fell in love with the long lad. They married at Holyrood Palace on 29 July 1565, even though both were Catholic, and a papal dispensation for the marriage of first cousins had not been obtained. English statesman William Cecil, and the Earl of Leicester had worked to obtain Darnley's license to travel to Scotland from his home in England. Although her advisers had thus brought the couple together, Elizabeth felt threatened by the marriage. Because as descendants of her aunt, both Mary and Darnley were claimants to the English throne and their children, if any, would inherit an even stronger, combined claim. However, Mary's insistence on the marriage seems to have stemmed from passion rather than calculation. The English ambassador Nicholas Throckmorton stated, the saying is that surely she, Queen Mary, is bewitched. Adding that the marriage could only be averted by violence. The union infuriated Elizabeth, who felt the marriage should not have gone ahead without her permission as Darnley was both her cousin and an English subject. Mary's marriage to a leading Catholic precipitated Mary's half-brother, the Earl of Murray, to join with other Protestant lords, including Lords Argyll and Glencairn, in open rebellion. Mary set out from Edinburgh on 26 August 1565 to confront them, and on 30 Murray entered Edinburgh but left soon afterward having failed to take the castle. Mary returned to Edinburgh the following month to raise more troops. In what became known as the Chisabout Raid, Mary and her forces and Moray and the rebellious lords roamed around Scotland without ever engaging in direct combat. Mary's numbers were boosted by the release and restoration to favour of Lord Huntley's son, and the return of James Hepburn. Fourth Earl of Bothwell, from exile in France. Unable to muster sufficient support, Murray left Scotland in October for asylum in England. Mary broadened her privy council, bringing in both Catholics and Protestants. Before long, Darnley grew arrogant. Not content with his position as king consort, he demanded the crown matrimonial, which would have made him a co-sovereign of Scotland with the right to keep the Scottish throne for himself if he outlived his wife. Mary refused his request and their marriage grew strained even though they conceived by October 1565. 
He was jealous of her friendship with her Catholic private secretary, David Rizzio, who was rumored to be the father of her child. By March 1566, Darnley had entered into a secret conspiracy with Protestant lords, including the nobles who had rebelled against Mary in the Chisabout raid. On 9 March, a group of the conspirators, accompanied by Darnley, murdered Rizzio in front of the pregnant Mary at a dinner party in Holyrood Palace. Over the next two days, a disillusioned Darnley switched sides, and Mary received Moray at Holyrood. On the night of 11 the 12th of March, Darnley and Mary escaped from the palace and took temporary refuge in Dunbar Castle before returning to Edinburgh on the 18th of March. The former rebels Lords Murray, Argyll and Glencairn were restored to the council. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?